Hi, I'm Robert Estrin, and you are watching livingpianos.com. Today is how to utilize terrace dynamics. What are terrace dynamics and why do they even exist? Well, this is a great question. We're going to cover that. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how you can use terrace dynamics to great effect in your music. Well, terrace dynamics are usually associated with Baroque music going way back before the piano was invented because of course, the piano has infinite expression from the soft to the loud. The keyboard instruments that were most popular during the Baroque era, Bach, Handel, Telemann, Scarlatti, etc., was the harpsichord, the clavichord, the virginal, and of course, the pipe organ. Now, you think about these instruments, while they did not respond to the speed at which the keys were depressed or the force of the, pressing the keys, they did have, many of these instruments had stops, particularly organs and some harpsichords, where you could engage different series of pipes or, in the harpsichord, different sets of strings. So the only way to really get a crescendo, let's say, getting louder gradually, was by opening up more pipes or op allowing more strings to get plucked on a harpsichord in order to get more sound gradually, because a crescendo was impossible on those instruments. So here's an example for you. The Bach two-part invention in C major, the one that goes like this. And that is the beginning of the invention. And from there, it starts to develop. And interestingly, you have a statement of the subject, that initial subject, that repeats again and again. I'm going to play it for you, and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Right after that section I just played, you have... Then the right hand repeats the same uh, subject in the same key, in the dominant. And then we go into starting on D. And then on A. And then inverted. And again inverted. And again. You'll notice how I got louder each time I played it. This is an example of terrace dynamics. Listen to how effective this is when I play it as it's written with both of the two parts of the invention. So you get the sense of a crescendo even though it's stepped in like terrace different levels of dynamics. It's so effective, particularly in music of the Baroque era, because it was conceived that way. Bach couldn't really have thought of an actual crescendo in this music because he didn't have it on the instruments he was playing. Well, what about in other styles of music? Is it ever effective? Well, the answer is yes. If you listen, for example, to the Kulau Sonata, Sonatina, that is, Opus 55, number one, the one that goes like this. A delightful little piece, incidentally. Well, later on, you have it in D minor, and then you have a sequence that gets, that I love to do with terrace dynamics. Listen how effective this is. So it's not just in Baroque music. Anytime you have a sequence, that is a repeated pattern, rather than playing them all the same, they usually are going somewhere, either up or down, 
uh, musically, and you can give it that direction and vitality, and it articulates the uh, actual architecture of the music because it's written sequentially, and to play it sequentially with terrace dynamics rather than just a crescendo or a decrescendo is much more appropriate, not just in Baroque music where it's obvious because of the nature of the instruments that the music was written for, but even in later styles of music. It's also a great thing to try out. So anytime in your score where you have repeated patterns, experiment with terrace dynamics and see what it does for your music. I'm interested in hearing from all of you. Again, I'm Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com, your online piano resource. Thanks for subscribing and ringing the bell. We'll see you next time.